Good morning. Well, it's still May, early May, and uh, everything's doing fine. In spite of all the cold we've had, I just thought I'd do a quick catch up. And these are some blueberries, which are wonderful. I might do another segment on blueberries because this is a certain variety. This comes from Australia, and I tell you, I've had great luck with it. It just makes tons and tons of berries. And also, this particular variety is very, very tolerant of alkaline soils compared to others, other blueberries. And here's just some basil and some different types of lettuce and some kale. I'm just starting to get them planted and lots of parsley of course fresh delicious and it is sweet it's sweet mm. it's just it's it's wonderful and a little patch of of strawberries I've got stuff growing all over the place this is my uh, persimmons tree. This one's Nikita's gift, which I've recommended strongly in the past. And we'll take a little walk here. I just wanted to make this video to explain something that a few people have asked me about, and I'll show you in a second. And they wanted to know why I have certain figs that are wrapped still on the bottom with burlap. And those were the, the fig trees that I actually just dug out of the ground. No, gro no ground bag like this at all. Now, of course, I'm, I've replanted these now because it's warm enough and there's no danger of frost anymore. And so these guys went back in and they're going to do very, very nicely and produce a lot of figs for me. I'm not finished. I've got more to put back in. I've got plenty more. Some of them I'm still acclimating to the sun, to the yellow sun, I call it. And uh, so that they won't be burned. Those guys were acclimated very well. And these guys, <clears throat> here's a very nice smith tree, uh, which produced a, an abundance of figs last year and will again. Now this is getting a little big for the greenhouse, so what I'm going to do, and I do keep, I shuffle them into the sun all the time. That's, that's the work that goes with being a, a figster, if you will. You just gotta shuffle, you've, you've, it's not always easy, and it's demanding sometimes. But because this is getting too big for the greenhouse, I'm acclimating it properly to the sun. And I'm going to be planting it over there in one of those holes I've dug and I'm going to use the grow bag method and, and cut holes in the bottom of the bag, which I demonstrated uh, several times in previous videos. In my last video, self-reliant figs, self-reliance and figs. Uh, in that video, I, I show you just exactly how I cut the holes. You can see here, down here, how it's done a bit. But anyway, uh, I wanted to talk a little bit about... Well, let's take a walk over here first. Here's one, uh, and it's got burlap wrapped around it because I just dug it, dug it out of the ground last fall and put it in my um, isolation room. It, that one might have gone into my actual fig cellar that I've demonstrated also in the past. I, I don't remember where it was, but... Uh, here's a lot of interesting varieties, plenty of varieties here, and they're going to be very, very, very healthy and very productive. Uh, um, I've got some very interesting varieties, which I will do a video in the future. I've been eliminating varieties. I want to, I want to mention that the prima donna figs are out. You know, I, 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 I find them. I, I see if they're, I, I deal with them, and I see if they're worthwhile growing in this climate in the Northeast. And if they're not, if they're not practical, I just don't have the time for them uh, to care for them and tend to them and 
baby them along. Uh, some, some I'll keep that are really worthwhile because of the exquisite taste. Uh, but others, I've, I'm just abandoning them. And that's what I do. That's what I've always done over the years. And I'm sticking more with the mainline figs that I know are hardy and productive in my zone that I can plant in the ground. Even if I have to dig them up and put them in the isolation room, it's okay. Uh, of course, I keep my figs small as much as I can. And then I'll prune them back real hard. And when they start getting too big, I give them away to my friends. I just give them away and, and to people that are interested. And uh, or plant them down in Virginia. I've got plenty of friends and relatives that want them, so <laughs> I can't even provide them with them. Uh, and so this is a, a bunch of stuff I grew. Uh, in here, there's broccoli rob, and there's there's lettuce, and there's and again there's some more basil because we make a lot of pesto, homemade pesto. We try to eat organic as much as we possibly can. And I, I will grow these, as I mentioned, in successive stages. Now this is one of my gardens, and I've got my tomato poles in. I'm gonna be planting my tomatoes today. Um, and I, I have a spot here for some peppers and maybe some eggplants and things. I've got little gardens all over the place that I grow various things in. Go in the greenhouse real quick, maybe. But I do want to speak a little more in detail about um, these trees here. I've got trees all over the place, different varieties. But for instance, this is a red Lebanese, a very good variety that I recommend. And I just dug it right out of the ground no ground bag or anything same with that one there and same over here this one seems like it does have a bag on the bottom okay that one does <clears throat> but these do not and i just i just dig them up and the advantage of that is you protect them from the winter that way and give them an early start in the spring like now and then plant them back in the ground and you would not believe that I'm giving you my advice and my word. You would not believe how how tough these figs are. You can dig them up. I put I dig them up and just throw them in my root cellar. And they stay there all winter long. And they don't freeze. And then I just plant them in the ground in the spring. And you can do it. And you can protect them that way. And they you wouldn't believe it, but some people would say, well, yeah, but will they really produce a lot of fruit that way? Being treated so harshly. They love it. Figs love having their roots trimmed back. They do. They're, they're more productive that way. They really are more productive. I have no problem with production. No problem with vitality or vigor when I use that method. They actually seem to prefer it. So... You don't have to be confined, those of you that are just confined or feel you're confined in colder areas or colder regions of the country like, like mine. Uh, you don't have to feel like you're absolutely confined to growing in containers. You don't have to. You don't have to just grow in containers. You can use these methods. Look at these little guys. You see, you see where the roots had come through and I dug them up in the fall? And now they're going to go back in the ground. As simple as that. And they're going to be highly productive. And they like it. <laughs> the figs like it. Uh, they're very reasonable guys, figs. You know, they, they just, here's another one. Look at this. This is a tiger. And you can see that I dug up the roots. I, I planted the bag. I call it my ground bag method. All the way in the ground. Totally. So that the wind won't blow them down. And they, they don't need as much water. You don't have to care for them every single day or every other day like you do when they're just container bound. I don't want all of my figs, some of my figs to be container bound. Yes, okay, okay, of course, but, but just really as few as I, I possibly can manage that way. I don't want a whole bunch. I don't want a big abundance. A lot of these are gonna go in the ground <clears throat> this year in various locations. I've got three locations where I can plant them. And so 
I have fun. Uh, you know, I've got lots of different varieties that I can choose from for different environments, for different uses. Some stay in containers, some do not. Some go, like this one, back in the ground in their grow bags, and you can see how, how they've succeeded. Um, some people are a little skeptical and say, well, yeah, but you can't do that. And, uh, you know, why not? Yes, you can. You can do it. I, I am showing you. If I can do it, I say it all the time, for what it's worth. <laughs> if I can do it, you can do it. You could have in-ground figs in the Northeast, okay, and dig them up. And they're highly productive. You've seen my previous videos. You can see that. A lot of them were, were dug up and put back in the ground and then flourish and are very, very, very productive. So I thought I'd make this relatively short um, video and show you my one of my gardens that I'm preparing or have prepared. And I will be making, uh, I have another that I plowed up and pretty soon I'll be planting some Here's some little guys growing that I, these are Celeste figs from the island of Chincoteague that I put in last year. And I'm gonna dig them up and replant them. Some of them are going in the ground, some of them are going back to Chincoteague, some of them I'm giving away uh, to friends that have requested them. And they'll be gone, they'll be completely gone in a little while. Over here, I'll be planting more, more figs in the ground for the summer. And here I plowed up a little ground for some potatoes and I'll be putting some squash in and there's another mulberry tree I keep busy I want to make sure I have plenty of fruits and vegetables to eat organically there's some blackberries there and here's a very nice mulberry tree that produces heavily and I've got some mulberry trees that um, I go to that I know where they are, where I can access access, access them, and uh, they they're just loaded with mulberries during the season, and I always look forward to that, and I even make tea out of the leaves. The leaves of mulberries are very very and persimmons and figs even, but but mulberry in particularly they they're very very nutritious, uh, so you might want to try that if you have a mulberry tree, dry up some leaves, and make some mulberry tea. Okay, it's a beautiful day. I've got lots of things to do. Thank you for your visit. Good day.